All right, in this video, I wanna talk about why I have recently switched to, or actually added using a slider back into my video workflow. Now, this is the first, well, actually this is the second slider I ever used. This is a Kessler Philip Bloom pocket dolly. Before this, I used like a $50 metal rail that just slid, had no belt system or anything. Um, but this was the first slider that I used back when I first started doing real estate video and promotional videos back in 2013, 2014. Um, it, it, it served its purpose. It's a little dated. Um, you really can't do much with this uh, in terms of technology. There is a an old-fashioned motor that uh, I could have brought out, but I don't want to go through the hassle. Um, but this no longer works for what I need. Too many, too many things to set up. So, so over the last few months, I've been well, actually the last year or so, I've been looking into sliders. I've been doing a lot of research. I researched several manufacturers, and I ended up landing on Rhino for several reasons. I'll kind of go through them in a minute here. But first, the main reason I wanted to start including a slider back into my workflow is because with the gimbal, while it allows you to be constantly on the go, flexible, it allows you to get through things quickly, um, I was finding myself, you know, I, I'm, I'm 40 at the time of this recording at least, and I was finding myself uh, getting really sore, especially in this area here of my arm, um, and it was lingering day, ap, days on after using the gimbal. It was really starting to actually wear on my body a little bit. While it was, it's good for working out, um, the effects that I was having just weren't, it just, it wasn't making sense. So there was that. I also wanted to start having, doing more architectural films and precision was very important and you can't get very good precision on a gimbal. You can get close and there's warp stabilization and everything which will get you partially there, but there's really no substituting using a slider. Like I said, I started with the slider, I'm very familiar with them, and I know how precise you can be with a slider. So I wanted to integrate a slider back into my workflow. Another thing that I wanted to be able to do is time lapses. I wanted to start incorporating time lapses back into my workflow. I did time lapses, like I said, 2013, 2014, but to, to do a time lapse on this old slider, I would have to hook up this whole separate unit, and I would have to do, it was, it was a nightmare. Like the, the interface on the, on the actual box was antiquated, a uh, little green LED screen and you had to, I don't know. It was horrible and it just would not work. The battery also didn't last significantly long unless you had an AC outlet. Uh, whereas the battery on this lasts several hours. Some of the other reasons I chose the Rhino system over others was it's silent. It's virtually silent. So if you are doing an interview situation, you can set this up to go back and forth. It's not gonna, the microphones aren't gonna pick up the motor here. Very quiet. Uh, there's also two different types of mo motors. Um, the other thing is that they're also ultra portable. So you can get a bag that will actually fit this entire setup fully assembled and just carry it around with you like that and you don't need to do any additional setup, which is really nice except for adding the camera on there. It also comes with a large traveling case if you get their ultimate kit, which also includes a 42 inch rail. That's another reason I like this system over others is because it's modular. So you can, this is a 24 inch setup that I have now, but you can also do a 42 inch setup, okay? Um, this cradle is ultra smooth. It's on some bearings here, runs very smoothly. You can either run it off motor or on motor if you want. I use it on motor, there's no reason not to, but I'm not gonna go into a full tutorial on Rhino sliders. I just wanted to tell you a couple reasons why I picked Rhino over the others. Those are the main ones. Uh, the very flexible, very portable. Uh, the price was right for the ultimate kit. Um, and I just have, I, I feel somewhat unlimited with this current setup. In the next video, I'm gonna show you the setup process versus setting up a gimbal. And you can see that there's really not a significant difference in the setup time, especially considering you can carry this around with you fully assembled. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and set, set up the Arc 2 uh, along with the motor. This is the high speed motor. And we're also gonna set up the follow focus system. And we're gonna do it side by side with setting up a gimbal. So you can kind of see that, you can kind of see the difference in setup time. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take the, um, the, the plate off of the Arc 2 and we're gonna put it onto our camera. This is a Blackmagic Pocket 6K Pro. 
but you can obviously use any camera, doesn't matter. The nice thing is that this comes, the plate comes with one of those um, little knobs that allows you to kind of get it started. Unfortunately, I have really fat fingers and <laughs> it's really cold right now, so my fingers are like frozen, so moving a little slower than normal. And inside the Art 2 comes this handy little tool to tighten things with, so we'll go ahead and tighten that up. And we're all set. I'm gonna go ahead and set that off to the side for now. We're gonna put the Arc 2 onto this. Now the nice thing about the Arc 2 is once you get it turned on, it has a motor controlled mounting system. So I can go ahead and set it on top of there, turn it on, and it screws right on there automatically for you. Okay, and all you need to do is take your little tool, and there's these slots inside here that you can just turn to tighten it up a little bit and you can slap this back in this little storage area for it and it's always there for you then we lift up the lever the quick release lever throw the camera in there put it down and we're we're all set we're going to go ahead and put the motor on there now there is a high speed motor and a high torque motor high torque would be if you want to do it like up and down motions High speed is if you just you're just your regular your regular left to right motions. So we're all set there, and then we have our follow focus. There's a handy little hole we're already built into this. Oop, let's go ahead and slide that in. Line it up with our focus ring, and we're all set. The only thing the only thing, the only thing left to do is just plug in our cables. So this is our follow focus cable. We'll go ahead and plug this in right here. Plug it into the arc two right there. And then we have to plug our motor in. We'll plug that in right here. And we plug the other end into the motor. <clears throat> and we're all set. Now the nice thing about the Rhino and Arc 2 system is that you can actually, <clears throat> and I have it, it's just not here yet, I ordered it, but the bag that you can get that comes with this, you can set it up fully assembled. So you don't even have to go through that whole process. You can have it fully assembled. All you need to do is put the camera on. Really nice. So that said, we've got it set up. We're going to go ahead and just, I'm going to show you how this works. Now, first thing we need to do before we get started is calibrate it. So we're going to go ahead and it's just gonna go all the way to the left side and it's gonna stop when it gets to the end. That way it knows w when it's there. So we're gonna set our first keyframe here. And we'll set another one right here. Let's maybe give it kind of extreme. And we'll go ahead and start it. It's gonna go all the way back to the first um, keyframe that we set. Go ahead and hit start and as you can see it goes all by itself you can set it up to loop so it'll go back and forth if you want um, you can do this in time-lapse mode as well so really convenient lots of nice things you know you would use these if you want precision uh, like I mentioned in the previous videos now for everyday real estate stuff it might not make sense for you the, the setup might be slow for you um, the the moving around might be slow for you uh, a gimbal is nice because you can be on the move the whole time. The challenge with gimbals is that they're working on your body the whole time. So you're constantly carrying them around. It, it, they're strain and also you have to do several takes to get it smooth. You also can't take a slider on a long distance like you can with a gimbal. So there's many advantages to having a gimbal. There's many advantages to having a slider. I personally wanted precision and I wanted to save my body from all the, the, the wear and tear I was putting through it. That said, we're going to take our slider, we're going to take the gimbal, and we're going to do three separate moves on both the slider and the gimbal so you can see the difference in, in use. All right, so we're going to do three shots. Uh, I already have the Rhino slider set up for the first shot. I have it programmed and everything, so that way we're just not spending a lot of time. After this, I'm going to set up two more shots, and I want to show you how easy it is to switch between positions. Right now, we're in my office space that I share with some friends. And uh, we're not going to do a house today because this is just a lot more convenient, to be honest with you. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, I already have the first shot set up for the Rhino. And we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to hit record on my camera, hit start on the Rhino, and just let it do its thing.
Okay, and that's the first shot. Now we're gonna replicate the same exact shot with the gimbal. So we're gonna set this off to the side. And I've got the Ronin S2. back once more just in case okay so that's the first shot so we're gonna go ahead and set this down now all right so this next shot we're gonna do a push in and tilt down and we're gonna start with the gimbal since I already have that set up um, now I'm at 20 millimeters on this my other lens on the slider is a 24 to 70 so we're gonna be a couple millimeters off in terms of focal length but close enough to get the, get the idea so we're gonna go ahead and get started here I'm gonna get my starting position start walking and push in. Overall, it's a pretty good shot. We're gonna go in reverse and get the same shot, just for backup. And then we're done for the most part. So we'll go ahead and set this down for the time being. And we're gonna get the slider set up. And this is pretty much what you're gonna expect. We're gonna start this up from, we're gonna start this from, um, set this up from start to finish. So what we need to do we're not gonna, I'm not gonna show you the settings because it's not important, but I'm gonna basically set the um, slider up to give me the keyframes that I want. So we're setting the first keyframe. And we're gonna go ahead and set the second keyframe now. Again, I can kind of dial it in precisely where I want it and make sure my verticals are aligned. We're all set. And I'm going to actually throw it on loop mode so we can get a back and forth. And it's going to go back to the start for me. But as you can see, the camera was pretty much already set up. All I needed to do was reposition uh, my camera. And I can obviously reposition my tripod height if I want to. All right, so here we go. We're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to hit record on my camera. I'm just going to let that thing go. All right, and it's done. So we can go ahead and stop it. All right, so that's our second shot. As you can see, there's not really a significant amount of time difference. It does add a couple minutes for each shot on the slider. So again, this may not be for everyday real estate, but if you have a luxury listing or if you want precision or if you're working on an architecture film or a promotional video, this is something you're gonna to wanna to consider. Also note that I've been standing here not having to hold anything the whole time. It just kinda of goes by itself. So this is what I'm talking about, having saving your arm strength, saving your, your muscles. For me, it was right here. Every single time I had a gimbal, every single time. Sore for days. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and set up one last shot just to show you the difference between the footage between the gimbal and the slider. So we'll get this, we'll figure out what our next shot's gonna be and we'll get that all set up. All right, so we've got two shots down. We did a sliding parallax shot. We did a push in and a tilt down at the same time. Now we're gonna do a one point perspective, but we're just gonna do a slide left to right motion. This is the most difficult one to nail in camera. Um, with precision. You, you have to correct verticals and horizontals in post-production. Uh, with the slider, you don't really have to worry about that so much. So we're gonna start with the gimbal since this will be the most difficult. And I'm gonna go ahead and frame up my shot here. And I'm gonna get kind of low just to compose it. All right, so there's a couple different things I can do with the gimbal. I can just simply stand right here and try to line it up. And I'm not just intentionally making this sloppy. I'm really doing my best. Okay, so another thing you can do uh, instead of trying to like move left to right is you can actually get your gimbal centered up and lock it in and hold in the, uh, the trigger. Move your body sideways. Hit record and just walk back and forth. This actually gives you a little bit more stability. Problem is you really, I mean, at least on this camera, I can't see what I'm filming, so I'm just kind of guessing that I'm nailing it. So you can do that. Now we'll go ahead and set up the slider. 
All right, so we're gonna go ahead and bring this over here. And this is a good example of tripod taking, or the slider taking kind of a long time to set up because we're gonna have to adjust our length here, or our height. So um, it, it is helpful to have two people, but you can do this with one, obviously, because I'm about to. But I'm just gonna kinda get these tripod legs down here and lock it up a little bit. And you want to try to get as balanced as possible. You can eyeball it or you can get like a little leveler if you want. But it feels close enough right now. And then we'll go ahead and get our slider set up and actually have this backwards. So we're just going to flip this around. I just want to make sure it's level and you can see it takes a while to set up, no big deal. Okay, we're going to set a new move up here. Okay, this still actually needs to be lowered maybe just a little bit. So with the gimbal, we would have been done already. So you have to be patient. And again, this is, when you're doing everyday real estate work, this might not make sense, but if you're doing an architecture shoot and you need that precision uh, or a promotional video, this is really gonna come in handy. Just taking your time, really locking it in. And you can fix a lot of this stuff in post-production Let's just try to get right in camera first. All right, so we'll set our first keyframe. Set our second keyframe. And I'm noticing it's a little off balance. So we'll just uh, make some adjustments here. Let's go back and I'll turn on loop mode here. We're gonna edit our first one just to be sure it's good. Yeah, we're good there, okay. So we'll just, we'll just go with it here. Make sure I'm in focus. Close enough. It's probably a little out of focus, but. All right. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started here. Now, one of the things you'll notice, especially when you're doing one point perspectives, is that on a slider, if you have it on one tripod, it's going to tilt if you have too much weight on one side when it gets there, and it's gonna to start to re tilt the other way when you, when you get to the other side. Normally, I have tripod braces that um, you, you clamp onto here, and you clamp them up here, and it keeps it even across, so you're not, there's no dipping. I forgot them. I didn't bring them with me. Just trust me that that happens and that's usually a solution for this. Uh, but for the most part, if you have a longer uh, rail system set up, if you have the 42 inch rail system set up, you can set up two tripods and you can actually set up two tripods on this. It's just kind of overkill. So anyway, I'll go ahead and get started on this. We'll go ahead and save that. And I think we're good to go. We'll go ahead and get started here. All right, and that's that. Again, a uh, little extra setup time, but much more precise as you can see uh, in, the, in the footage examples. And again, you can correct a lot of this stuff in post-production, um, uh, but for the most part, you can see where the use case would be ideal for a slider situation. So in my case, I'm going to always have, on all my shoots, I'm gonna have a slider setup with a certain focal length and then my gimbal set up with another focal length. That way I have options and I can move relatively quickly. 
It's always nice if you have somebody else with you that can get shots set up for you while you get other shots if you want to move more efficiently. But this is pretty much how I'm going to run my video going forward when it comes to architecture shoots or promotional shoots. So hopefully you guys found this helpful. Let me know if you have any questions on any of this. And uh, if you need to see some more detail, I can go into that for you as well. If you want to see a detailed setup on the Rhino system, I put a link for Rhino's official video that shows you how the Arc system is set up in the menu system. It's it's very easy and intuitive. And again, you can also control it all on your phone. So, all right, thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions.